world not too far from our own lies a house filled with chilling secrets. And behind every door, a world of imagination and mystery. Although some mysteries come from beyond the grave. The power of chili compels you. The power of chili compels you. The power of chili compels you. Rising taste buds since 2017. Order yours online now from www.deanofthedead.com. Recommended 18 trips to the bathroom. Good luck. Welcome to the Baron's Hideout Podcast. I'm your host, Dustin. And I'm Aaron. And today we have a very, very special guest on for a very special episode, Dean of the Dead Hot Sauce, all the way from the UK. And um, we are very excited to hit another milestone and talk to this absolutely gortastic person with his amazing promos, his awesome names for his sauces. It's it's amazing. Just everything that uh, Dean has to offer right now is is really good. So if you guys love horror and you like hot sauces, this is definitely uh, the person you want to be checking out. So we will let you, um, let Dean introduce himself a little bit and uh, kind of tell the world, you know, what he's all about. So Dean, if you want to uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. What an introduction, Dustin. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank hey, you. you guys. How's it going? Great, great. Uh, so uh, we're so pleased that you've asked me to come on the show. Um, so yeah, my name's Dean. Uh, I run a company called Dean of the Dead's Horror Hot Sources, um, which is basically, so it's a UK-based company. Um, I started it off around about 2017. Um, and it's just kind of, it's been growing from there. Um, started off with just a bunch of names, 
and then I started kind of trading at horror events and then I've been sort of getting in, getting really in with the, the chili community and the horror community and just been doing a bunch of podcasts and getting the name out there and, yep. you know, pe peddling the hot sauce wares. Uh, unfortunately, here a bit of a stumbling block with the pandemic, but I've just been keeping creative and, and, and you know, building on, building on my, uh, my arsenal of hot stuff. I know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, yeah, I run a, I run a, it's a, it's a, it's a hot sauce company, but I'm trying to switch it into a bit of a brand. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I do a little sauce. bit, a little bit of everything eventually. Add that's to it. Yeah, that's kind of the plan. You know, it started off obviously as the hot sauce. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we can go into that in a bit, like how I got into doing that and why I started doing that in the first place, and then sure. how the horror thing got involved. But, but yeah, pretty much, you know, it, it sort of it started off as just a bit of fun and then it's kind of morphed into you know i was just get, i literally was getting such good feedback from it and without intending to you know it was just something that came together and um and i kind of just thought oh i'm on to something pretty cool here mm -hmm. and i was kind of getting messages from people all over the world saying you know this is such a great idea and you know there's all the different collaboration ideas and stuff yeah, like that it really is um and and it's it's so weird because even though it's only essentially hot sauce i ended up on a jeepers creepers movie set like with the with the whole idea like we that <laughs> they were they were recently filming um they, so basically they're doing jeepers creepers for jeepers creepers reborn um yeah. and it just so happened like a friend of mine was doing the casting for the movie and because of the whole and so basically, and, and the beginning of the film is set, spoiler alert, is set at a, <laughs> um, <laughs> is set at a horror festival called Horror Hound. And um, basically there's, there's a load of people that have gone to this horror festival and then a creeper rocks up, comes in and starts effing stuff up. Um, but they basically wanted a load of stalls for uh, like horror themed stalls. So this guy's called me up and he's like, you do a horror hot sauce thing. That's perfect. Come along, be in a movie. I'm like, what? Wow, that, okay. that's really cool. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and it's just, I don't know, it's just there's so many different arms and legs that it's grown since just being an idea, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's, and all of it, I love, you know, none of it's been a chore. I've had fun with all of it so far. No one can tell me yes or no, which is the main thing. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing that I love the most about it, man. You know, when you when you do collaboration, when you work with other people, sometimes and especially like I kind of found this out. Any job, you know, I've always been self-employed, or most of my life been self-employed. When you work with other people, a lot of the time, you just you know having that creative freedom or having that freedom to just say, man, I'm, just, you know, whenever you, when you got someone else saying, no, don't do that, that doesn't look cool, and you're thinking, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, I don't get. I, basically, I don't get all of that. Yeah, you gotta That's you gotta good. do what you love, you know. And um, ooh, if you're not ooh. doing something that you don't love, then what's the 100%. point? You know, one hundred percent. Work a day in your life, <laughs> yeah. man. And 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 I love hot sauce, and I love horror. Same. So, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I love to do together. I'm, so yeah, what's not to love, man? That was actually something I wanted to ask you too. Is like, do you yeah. do everything yourself? Like, you don't? Do you have anybody that like works um under you to help you uh, do like all your promotion and your photo shoots and distribute your sauces is it all just you it's all just me at the minute wow. I, wow. literally do, I literally do That's everything impressive. from the ground up um I, I started off um i mean yeah pretty much i've got so basically i've got a lot of friends I got, I've, i'm i'm really blessed i've got a lot of creative friends um who help me out so for example i'll come up with um the ideas that i want for the label artwork and tell them what I want and draw up a kind of list of what I want. And then I'll have a friend, my friend Kev, who's a graphic designer, I'll send that over to him and just I'll draw him like a really kind of crappy kid's stick drawing of what I want. <laughs> and he'll send me send me back like a really like you know, much better, cooler version of it, you know. Um but you know I'll, I'll essentially I'll kind of just get all the ideas, stick them down on paper and then just send them out to my super talented friends who kind of make make it a reality so uh, um for example with the photo shoots um the photographer is a friend of mine kylan he's, he's a bass player friend of mine who uh, play in one of my bands with um and he does a lot of kind of really uh, it's called kajamira photography but he does a lot of really kind of weird kooky stuff <laughs> and um he sort of approached me with an idea that he had that wasn't anything to do with the hot sauces it was like uh you wanted to do like a grim fairy tale shoot, but kind of twist oh, wow. it on its twist it on its head. So like have mm -hmm. 
uh, for example, you'd have like a serial killer chasing the two princesses or something like that. They yeah. <laughs> switch it on its head so it's the princesses were turning it around and killing the, That's the cool. serial killer. So, That's so really basically, cool, yeah. he, he said to me, oh, do you want to come along and be involved in it? And I was like, yeah. He was like, I can't afford to, to pay you like I'm paying the models kind of thing. So he said, why don't you bring along the hot sauces and chuck them in the shoot? And um, and then you can use it for a bit of promo. And it's just been killer from there. Like, as soon as I put those pictures up, everyone was like, wow, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they they really do pop out on screen like um oh, yeah. when i i think i saw your promos um because i think we uh got in touch not that long ago and mm. once we started following each other and talking like i was going through your promos i'm like wow these are some really good shots they yeah very bloody and yeah scary yeah. and everything that i love and just seeing like you hold like the hot sauces and stuff and you're like being like dragged around or getting like, gonna get you like head chopped off it's great it's <laughs> i think it looks amazing and it's just blending the two passions together man yeah it's just good yeah. it's just, like i say it's just you can be as creative as you like with it and it, it just works it literally just works i have to be a little bit careful with those pictures because i hear stories about people putting um certain pictures up on instagram you know and i'm building quite a strong following and i can just imagine mm -hmm. chucking a, a bit of a gory one up and they're like nope and then just yeah. like, like it and take my whole account down like yeah so you have to be a bit careful There's, i've got a few shots that are like I've, I've got some that i haven't posted up which you guys would probably love but like i've got some big machetes and oh yes bats and you you name it but i was like hmm I think Honestly, it takes is one person to not like it and <laughs> yeah that's it yeah exactly and it's, you've got to be careful because especially when you get some of the stuff that happens in the news these days and beheadings and yada yada yeah. you, you know someone looks at a machete and they go well you know that's just putting out the wrong message and they hit that mm -hmm. report button and then your account your account's pulled down and you have but to then, start all over again but then so, the people got to realize like your brand your horror i mean like that you got to expect that stuff some you know? people just don't understand it you know yeah i think there's that you know there's because it's art it's art isn't it at the end of the day it's yeah. all it's essentially it's just art but it's whether whoever out there sees it as that so people get offended by everything these days man. Yep. yeah everybody everything. <laughs> it's the smallest thing like everything will be completely perfect Oh. and it's just that one thing when it's like well that's one not cool <laughs> drives me nuts man they pull yeah. all the great shows down off of netflix because this is you can't say this and you too can't say that and I'm just yeah. like, oh, come on yeah everybody is getting just a little too sensitive like i don't mind being sensitive but when you get into the extent of yeah i think it's just common away. sense in life isn't it it's yeah. just you know knowing what is right and wrong no you know i don't know well it's, but the, the, the thing about the horror genre is it does it pushes but it pushes the boundaries pushes the pushes the exactly. so i think people do you know when they see oh okay it's a horror page you know that he's obviously not actually getting his head chopped off <laughs> yeah <art. Nope. laughs> even, even even though in some of those pictures that is a genuine look of pain on my face like they, yeah. they may have dug it in a little you bit convinced. Again, like, <laughs> yeah you you definitely pull them off like they they definitely do look like oh well yeah something is going to happen to them <laughs> and and it's just one still just imagine if that was like a whole like short clip that yeah. would be awesome too like yeah. um little trailers food for thought there man yeah. yeah just like little like 15 second clips or something and it's like throw it up there and that's a good idea that's a good idea have you guys seen i did a little promo uh video it's about five minutes long called house of a thousand sources yes yes i did oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> right so that was that was shot at my house just some friends over it was like the windiest day on <laughs> in, in record over here um and it actually worked perfectly because we had a saw scene like a sort of source like yeah. a mock-up a mock-up <laughs> scene that we set up in the shed and i kind of got all these old newspapers and all these old chains from work and just put them up and then we kind of set a friend of ours he's a cosplay who cosplays as a zombie at events a guy called andrew we're such a lovely guy and he i said will you be the guy in the saw scene and he's got this own electric chair thing that he takes around with him to events and he brought that along as part of the trap <laughs> and then awesome. this, he had this head thing that was part of the trap and then he kind of <laughs> hooked, hooked him up with some saws it's so windy it was kind of rattling the shed and rattling the chains and rattling the paper and i was just like man this is perfect for horror, <laughs> perfect yeah. For horror. That's so awesome. yeah it worked it worked really well but then halfway through the shoots we shot it in, in two different days but the first day we were shooting a the paris scoville activity scene i love the where, names man oh, where no. the bot the bottle kind of just drags itself across the table like a, like it's in like a poltergeist or something and halfway through shooting that we had a power cut <laughs> so, oh no, no. <laughs> so it was like it, it, the whole day it kind of worked out though it was just know? horror personified man yeah definitely 
Well, that's good. And um, uh, yeah. like everything, like I was saying earlier, like your brand is great. Your witty names are absolutely awesome. Just taking on Thank like you. all like the popular movies. I uh, you get keep doing it, man. Like even with like your new rubs and your jams and everything, like it's great. Thanks, it, man. it really I'm... is. And I really want to see you like strive everywhere because oh, it's, it's thanks, great. Dude. Thanks. So I've got, I've literally got a list. So I've got seven sauces at the minute. They're all, they're all fruit based. They're all quite, they're all sweet, they're all fruity. Ooh, and nice. I want to do, I, I want to do another six or seven uh, more. Um, what's the word? Um, like savory. savory. Like, yeah. Savory. And I've got the names. I've got them, but I'm, I don't, I'm keeping them under wraps at the minute. Yes. No, no, no. I want to be surprised. <laughs> I want to be surprised. I want to oh, see how I'm, great these are going to be. I'm so excited to, to put them out because you know when you just think, oh man, that's gonna be a killer. That's that's yeah, brilliant that one. And then you get know. another one. And now I've got like six or seven for the jams. I've got another one for the rubs, and I've got another four, I think. No, sorry, six or seven for the sauces, another one for the rub, two for the rubs, and another four for the jams. That is awesome. And I've got like a barbecue pack lit thing as well that I'm working on. And <sighs> man, and then I want to I'm gonna I, I want to try and somewhere down the line i don't quite know when but this is all you know much further down the line when i'm sort of building on the brand i'd love to do a craft beer yes especially since you love them so much ales from the crypt man ales from the crypt not tales from the crypt ales from the crypt <laughs> i love it um, oh my god such genius <laughs> it really is like, i try to like be witty with like some of the stuff i put out like even on this podcast and like talking about it but like you just take it to like another level and i i love it i love it so much uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes having a little smoke helps, but there you go. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> hey. I'm not sure if I can say that on this podcast. No, you can, no, you you can say whatever you want, Dean. We are not censored oh, okay, here. Cool, cool. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No having censorship. Helps. <laughs> we are completely... <laughs> <smoke out. laughs> um, do you write your own recipes or...? Yeah, I do. Um, so I kind of... I started off... I don't have any culinary background. I don't, okay. I don't, I never, really? I never, I never, wow. I never studied anywhere. I mean, apart from home economics at school, I never, you know, but I've always been into cooking. I've got like, I come from Ita an Italian background. So I guess it's just in the blood. There you um, go. My, my dad was a great cook. I, I moved out at the age of 17. So I was just like, I've always cooked for myself. I, I love cooking. Um, <clears throat> I think cooking, Cooking's an art in itself, you know. It's just, you can get in that kitchen, glass of wine, that film on in the background, a bit of music. Yep. Just just get creative. So, so basically, when I first decided that I wanted to get into making hot sauces and chili sauces, I, I started off by um, looking at other recipes, looking at kind of you know what what you need, what sort of things yeah. go into into it's like, like the, the basics. Yeah, yeah, man, and then and then just oh, it, it was really kind of just like being a bit of a mad scientist in a laboratory, just kind of throwing things together and, yeah, and okay. doing a bit of food profiling and seeing what works and and you know and I'm and I love I love my food. Um, I love I know I know what I taste good and what tastes crap. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I kind yeah. of and I, and I definitely know it when it comes to hot sauces because I've got a vast collection of sauces. I love my hot sauces, so I knew if I made something and tried it and I liked it, I knew it was going to be good. Well in my eyes it was going to be good i was a little bit nervous when i first started going out and trading at events because that's when people really tell you what they think and some oh, people, yeah. <laughs> some, some, some people don't hold back um but it was it was really and so the first event that i traded at wasn't actually a food show it was a, it was a horror convention and they had um they had Dario Argento was there. They had oh uh, wow, wow, yeah, really I nice. Just did his just did Suspiria. Suspiria too. <laughs> really nice, really nice guy. Really, um, he's like a tiny little granddad man, and he, he's <laughs> speaking in Italian. They had like an interpreter there, but but really sweet guy. Um, they had like Corey Feldman. Um, they had uh, oh man, who else was there? It was tons of guests. I can't remember. But anyway, that was that <laughs> there's was always the so many. Yeah, yeah, I was a ton of guests, but that was the first convention I ever traded at. And, you know, I've kind of rocked up with these hot sauces and you could see like you've got all these traders with like art tables, art prints and like models and stuff. And they're kind of thinking, what's the hot sauce guy doing here? What's that? <laughs> but, it, but it was a success and everybody loved it. Everybody loved the idea and, and everybody loved the sort the taste of the sauces. So I was thinking the idea works, the, the flavors work. I, I put out all the little samples. People loved it. So from that i just thought you know what okay man i'm just gonna dive into it so the next event i booked was a, an event called the london film and comic-con which is like a 
I think they had something like it was at the Kensington Olympia, which is basically it's a huge, huge place, man. It's probably like okay. Madison Square Garden or something. It's massive. Oh wow! Um, and uh, they have like I don't know forty or thousand people per day passing through the doors, and it's a three day event. So I'm just oh, like man. that was taking a, a a leap straight into the deep end. Oh, yeah. but, man, <laughs> it was great. It, they had like Jason Momoa there as a guest and everything. You know, Charlie. Oh Sheen. wow! Charlie Sheen was there. Um, uh, it was yeah, it was huge, but it was literally just it just worked. It was great. I really enjoyed it. Everybody loved the, the thing. I, I pretty much sold out of everything, and from that moment on, I was just like, yeah, this is it. This is what I want to do. This works. That's great. This is and my environment. You know, that's awesome. And um, hopefully, once you can uh, get over here, we'll see in some conventions because oh, I'd love to. We uh, we've been dying to go to like concerts and conventions oh, and everything. And yeah, I bet. We, uh, we live really close to uh, Salem, Massachusetts, and they have like a really cool film festival there, um, the Salem um, Horror Fest that we attend to, which is really cool. That would be something. If you can get over here, oh. get into contact with them, and that would be great. That would be <laughs> incredible, man. I would love to do that. Salem. Yeah. Um, they, uh, I, I, I'm trying to get – so I, I get a lot of people contact me from the U.S. saying, um, do you ship? Do you ship over there? And the thing is, I can I can ship over to the US. In fact, I think you guys dropped a message earlier on, right? Yeah, actually. I did. We, um, I can ship. It is possible to ship. But the problem at the minute is it costs a fortune. To, yeah. I'd it costs imagine. an absolute fortune. You were just for one 150 mil bottle of sauce, you know, you'd, you'd pay just a normal price for that. But then the shipping, <laughs> the weight and all that. Oh yeah. man, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to get it figured out at the minute because it, it's good just to have it as an option on the site. So if people do want to go ahead and do it, then then great. Yeah. But ideally, what I'd need, what I, I really really need, is like a distributor in the mm -hmm. US that can kind of make it that end, or even can I can get it out to them or something or other, and then they can ship it inland kind of thing because it just yeah. saves you guys so much yeah. money on that postage. It's really, it's, I'm talking like. 30 pounds sterling english pounds so i think that's probably what like 40 dollars 35 dollars yeah something, something like about that's that crazy which is crazy for and then the, the sauce on top of that man and like yeah 50 dollars for yeah. a bottle and of sauce like especially since you're doing everything yourself too i can imagine it's it's since you're pulling yourself in so many different ways trying to get yourself out there and you know doing more promos and trying to get more sauces and you're like okay you well i have a time. huge a huge demand over in the u.s right now i gotta figure out how to get that done I have people yeah. in the UK here trying to get that done. So yeah, I can imagine it's a lot on on one person. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> my, 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 <laughs> but again, it just boils down to I love it. So I just I want yeah, to exactly. roll in. And uh, my partner, she really helps me out a lot. Like she always helps me um, at events. She's great. Where if if I'm if I'm running around doing other stuff and I'm like, oh man, this needs bottling up. This needs labeling, and she'll always help me with that. <laughs> That's great. Um, so that's cool. So she's really, really supportive. And it, it's kind of, it's, I'm at that sort of stage where it doesn't really, until events start again, it doesn't bring in enough money to hire somebody um, mm -hmm. at the minute. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, I'll just keep it, keep it all in house at the moment. Uh, when events do start again, which is for me at the minute it's the beginning of july fingers crossed oh wow that's um but, that's very soon so yeah i'm hoping yeah hoping definitely you. um so and basically i'm just going to hit the ground running i've got like one every single weekend weekend in july including that one i just mentioned the london film and comic con at the big uh, kensington olympia that's in july um i can't nice. see it happening personally i can't see it happening but i don't know i'm trying to be optimistic but basically once that start once they start again i think hopefully that should then give the business a boost i've got events from scotland working all the way down the uk so it's almost like taking it on tour man yeah um it's like you're in a band yes exactly i'll take my guitar with me and just <laughs> yeah go ahead are we like that Le 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 along the way <laughs> you like that levi roots have you heard of levi roots have you have you guys heard of him um i don't um, think so so he's a he's a hot sauce guy right he's based in the uk He's a big Jamaican guy, and he went on to. We have this program over here called Dragons Den. Have you guys heard of that? Dragons Den. This Dragons sounds, sounds familiar, but it might be yeah. something else I'm thinking of. Yeah, you'd you'd know if you knew what it was. You'd know. Yeah, basically, it's um, you might have a version of it in the US, but it's uh, basically it's a bunch of a bunch of rich people sit on a panel, like super mega rich business people <laughs> sit on a panel, on a panel, and um, and then people come in one by one and pitch their ideas 
to them and it's a televised. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and they, they ask for like a certain amount of money to get their business up and running and done. And it's brilliant because some of them are just absolutely bonkers. Like people, they just, mm-hmm. they obviously you have to keep in for entertainment purposes. Some of the real like crazy people. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. So there's one guy called Levi Roots that went on it many many years ago and he had this source called reggae reggae source and he, he walked on playing a guitar this is why i was going back to the guitar thing so he kind of walked on and he had written a song for it and everything like his, his reggae reggae source now he got offered to work with this one of the guys one of the dragons they call him and now this dude's worth 35 million his source is holy uh, shit it's, and he, he used to he used to trade it like the Notting Hill Carnival, like just like set up a table in the street and just sell his sauce in the street. Wow. Now this guy has got like, oh dude, honestly, like restaurants, he's and you name it, he's thirty five million man, just from guy from Brixton. That's great. Just I'm surprised I've never heard of it. Yeah, um, check him out, Levi Roots. So yeah, basically, like I I would really like to be the horror Levi Roots. <laughs> Take I my guitar and tour. Play some Metallica, <laughs> sell some hot sauce, watch some horror movies. Why not? I'm Do it all. <laughs> Lose the show if you're dedicated enough, you know, things will work out for you. Absolutely, man. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. And you, you just know? gotta keep you just gotta keep keep smart. working at it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I every every day I wake up and I just hit my Insta and I work on that. And then I, I've just mm-hmm. had I have lists, man. I just I, I just have li- my life is just a series of lists. <laughs> It's like a set um, list. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like a set list, yeah. But it's just, you know what, because I have to, because I've got so much going on in here, I have to write it down. Because, Get it down somewhere. Yeah, and then I just, I feel so good. Like, I look back at the end of the day once I've ticked a load of things off and think, oh, I don't know, I think I feel like I'm achieving stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, you you found us and we're in the US, so you're definitely, oh, uh, dude, you're listen, definitely I'm, making it. Like, oh, man, this is this is it for me. And I was talking to somebody about it earlier on, and I was like, if the, the, the you know the teenage dean who had those dreams of going to America and you know just doing all these things in America, could say down the line you will be chatting to people in America about something that you're doing, mm-hmm. it, I'd, I'd be it would blow my mind, and it blows my mind now. So you know this is this is great. I love stuff like this. Yeah, like Aaron and I were talking about it too. Like, dude, we cannot believe that we're even trying like getting reach out over to the UK right now, and we're getting somebody on <laughs> and hitting like a huge milestone. Like this is this is absolutely crazy and. Brilliant. He's so blown with with horror, and he he has hot sauce. We love cooking because both Aaron and I were also cool. cooks. We we love we love food. Man, and, um, just if I make if I make it to the US or vice versa, we're definitely hanging out. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, I will definitely have you over some some beers. Oh, I have cool. some really cool like wing places around here too that I think you'd uh, you'd enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, sold, sold. So another thing I wanted to ask, we kind of touched on it, uh, I guess a little bit was. Was horror something that you were always into, or was it something that kind of found you? Like, um, because oh. sometimes when I'm when I'm like listening to other podcasts, people are like, like I wasn't really like looking to be in like like a horror director or anything. It kind of just like found me. So I'm kind of curious if that was like mm. uh, something with you, like if it found you or not. So I, I was when I first discovered the horror genre. Um, so my my stepfather he used to run a, a VHS store in okay. in a place in north london and growing up me and my my brother and my sister um would we would be like i don't know what like five or six i guess and we'd get to whilst he was working or locking up or shutting up you know we'd, we'd have to go and sit in the store and sit out the back and just kind of hang out in the store um but obviously you know we did have a little wander around and see look yeah. at these videos you know and these pictures and this artwork and it was always the horror section that just drew me in like a magnet and it was mm-hmm. it was in particular there's an artist i don't know if you guys have heard of him called graham humphreys um mm-hmm. uh, he, he yeah it sounds sounds familiar to me yeah check him out man after this podcast have a check him out go and check out his work and you'll you'll see um man you'll you'll recognize the covers straight away basically okay. he's done <laughs> evil, evil dead uh the original nightmare on elm street okay yep, yep um night of the creeps man there's just a there's a laundry list of cool films that he's done the covers for um and in particular so it's like his his work and um just I, you know i'd be drawn to the covers and i'd be like what's this and then you'd flip the cover over and you'd see someone hacking someone to death and i'd be like what's this <laughs> what's this <laughs> and I, I just i just developed an obsession with it like a real obsession with it like the artwork the, the images in particular the image of freddy krueger really 
just stuck out to me. I was fascinated by it. And even though my mum wouldn't let me watch it, my grandparents would because they had no uh, clue. It's always the grandparents. <laughs> they had no always clue. Always the grandparents. <laughs> they had no idea. So I'd go and I'd go over like and stay at their place, you know, as you do when you're a kid. And um, they, they'd take me down to the local video store because this is how old I am. And um, and uh, they'd be like, oh, you know, completely like, no, they've got no clue. You know, what what do you what do you want to rent? And I'd go straight to like Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream Warriors or something. Great movie. Uh, this Very please, movie. this please, Nan, and she'd be like. Oh, okay, that looks a bit, you know. I said, yeah, that's fine. Mum said it's all right, you know. Anyway, so I just get a whole bunch, bunch of these movies, like Brain Dead, you know, go whatever, just chuck them all in there and just go and sit there and just be terrified. I loved it. I just loved it. Even at um, junior, junior school, um, primary school, we call it, uh, I was trying to start a Freddy Krueger club. Everyone else wanted to play football. I <laughs> no, no. I was like, man, I don't want to play football. I want to talk about Freddy Krueger. Yeah. He, <laughs> great, great design on him. And, um, yeah yeah absolutely. even when i was um really young the first horror movie i was introduced to and i think i was maybe eight or nine because i was i wasn't really um aware of horror mm. movies because my parents kind of like shielded me a little bit of it yeah but then um one day my mom was like okay we're gonna put on the tv this is around halloween time I'm like okay let's see what kind of halloween movies are are playing and yeah. halloween 1978 is playing i'm just like Oh my it's God, nice what am I it. watching? Yeah. And I just fell in love after that. So I'm like obsessed with Michael Myers. I got like almost all of his masks. Like it's just that one film that, that drove yeah. me to like everything else. Have you ever met the guy that played him? Um, I got very, very close to um, meeting Nick Castle. He was um, a guest at Salem Horror Fest, but I wasn't able to make it the day he was there. Yeah, man. I got this. I met him. At, I don't know if you can see the autograph on there. but Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I met, I met him at, where was he? I think he was at that London Film and Comic Con. And then also at the same event, at the same event, and I met this one, the new one, James Jude Courtney as well. Yeah, he did a really good job. Yeah, he really did, didn't he? Yeah. But um, Nick Castle, well, there's an, an event that I'm going to in Manchester in October this year called For the Love of Horror. Such an awesome event. Um, and we've got, I've got a ticket to meet Tim Curry. Ooh. That that's good if you can do that because he's he's expensive. <laughs> oh yeah, it costs it cost a, cost a lot of money, but it was. I don't think there's going to be many more chances to do that. No, unfortunately. Um, so I just it's, thought, do, do you know what, man? Sucks what happened to him, man? Oh, it really does. And what a talented guy! And mm. you know, and I grew up watching. I even I remember the worst witch. I don't know if you remember the worst witch he was in. Um, really cheesy kids thing <laughs> about witches, but he maybe. He played, he played the like the main head witch in it and you just got to check it out it's so cheesy i'll definitely do it just refresh myself <laughs> it's brilliant just for tim curry's performance the whole show is awful but, but tim curry's <laughs> brilliant um but yeah like it man you know it yeah uh, awesome. yeah i have um a couple Rocky of things horror. up here yeah there you go there you go um but yeah so nick castle's gonna be at that event yeah and he's 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 great um really unassuming like you know, yeah, he's uh, um over the last like I want to say like five years has been popping up really in popularity everywhere because yeah just the, the love for like the first film and especially since the 2018 um Halloween came out everybody was like okay let's just go watch the original and everybody's like wow yeah. Nick Castle he didn't really get yeah. that much credit back then yeah that's you know, right, yeah. everybody was saying that everybody was wearing the costume but like it was his face yeah that yeah. you saw so it's yeah. like he's the one that's really that's right, yeah, and it wasn't it a, um, a William Shatner mask, isn't it? It's a, it's a yep. Shatner mask that got the, the uh, carpenter sprayed. Yep, you know? and they just took off the uh, the eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's uh, so history. Funny. History was made, but that's yeah. that's what I love about Car Carpenter. So creative, and he's just uh, he a real indie guy. But you know, and he's just made some just some classic movies mm -hmm. he's doing a lot of comic books now too i don't know if you saw that on um storm king he's been writing like comic yeah, books no, uh his son's doing a lot of music now that's kind of like in the same vein as like his um his sin stuff that's really cool i forget his son's name now oh, is it john or jacoby or joseph or something it's, like that it's or... something like that it's it's weird no, i forget no, no his name's john isn't it hang on yeah um, i'm getting confused Cor K no, I think it begins with a C. Anyway, Cor it might be Carey, Carey, something. I don't it's know. Cody, Cody. I think it's Cody. Anyway, <laughs> Cody, Cody. That's it. Cody, it's Cody. It? That's right. I knew I'd get her in the end. I knew I'd get her in the end. Uh, yeah, it's Cody. Cody. 
<laughs> yeah, so he's been. I don't want to start at John and got to Cody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been pumping out music. Um, I've been checking out, and it's yeah. it's very very much in the same vein as his father. And yeah, um, I think, I think he even. Together, don't they? Yeah, I think he plays like John plays guitar and some of the stuff too because he's also a musician. Yeah, he, he does everything. Comics. He did does with the soundtrack, didn't he, for Halloween? And, and yes, he did. He, he helped. Movies. Yep. Um, it's it's crazy what the, the amount of work that he does and yeah. and the thing. I mean, everybody always goes to the thing, but my favorite will always be be Halloween because it was yeah. the first film I was ever introduced Can't to, and the pacing of that movie is great. Yes, it's super low budget and cheesy, and there's a lot of. Uh, just weird stuff that happens in there with like a lot of like the dialogue, yeah, um, and not I think a lot of blood. What makes it great though, honestly. Yeah. And yeah, there's yeah. only two scenes in it with blood: the beginning and the end. And that's right. it. Wow, it's just all about his presence, isn't it? And the way mm -hmm. he's just you know creeping behind them bushes and um... <laughs> kills the dog. Yeah, you can't do that, man. You yeah. can't kill a dog. You can't kill a dog. No, I agree, man. Yeah, we're, we're, we're big dog lovers. Yeah, <laughs> can't no, do that. Not. Um, and and the music as well. The music plays a huge part in the um, suspense in that movie. Super simple, super really simple, simple. really simple. Really simple sense. Yeah. I, th I think when we because uh, we reviewed the movie not that long ago. I think what did it, Aaron? I think it said that he took three or four days to write the music, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. It was only uh, he did days. it in like a short amount of time. Wow. Yeah. So he just pumps that stuff out. It's like, okay, here it is. And again, you think just how you know how simple that probably all came together for him, like the the evolution of the mask, just spraying it, taking mm -hmm. off the eyebrows, instant legend. You know, uh, the music yeah. four days, classic horror soundtrack. You know, it's just just Great. like. <laughs> and I mean, Simplic sometimes simplicity is the key, man. Sometimes oh, yeah. simplicity is the key. You know, look at the yep. Beatles. Yeah. And I mean, unfortunately, nowadays. It's so rare that you see a movie like that that's so simple and kind of just like cut and dry right there. Not a lot of stuff going on that but still so that takes off, you know. Yeah, I agree. But um, since we're on the topics of uh, horror movies, what was it uh, that fueled this collaboration with um, Fried Barry for your hot sauce, your new one that's coming oh, out? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you guys watched that movie yet? Uh, I watched the beginning of it and then I fell asleep because I was so tired. So I got to go and rewatch it. It's, yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's bonkers, but it's brilliant. It's very, it's really creative. It's really artistic. It's probably not for everyone, but it is. I love it. It's great. And I'm not just saying it because the collaboration. It's it's totally <laughs> up my street. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's it's um. It's like it's like ET on acid, man. It's yeah. That's what I've been hearing. Bonkers, but it's just so. It's so colourful. I love really colourful movies. And I love movies Same. that are just, like a love house of a thousand corpses. It's just so colourful. Uh, yep. So yeah. colourful, that film. That's why I look around me and I, I just all, I haven't got a normal coloured light bulb in my house. <laughs> um, uh, so the, the, the collaboration came around. So Ryan, the director, he's, um, he's originally from South Africa, but he was living in Liverpool. Um, and... Do you know what? I can't even recall if I've ever actually met him, but I did. I, <laughs> I, I went along and traded at the there's the thing in Liverpool called the Liverpool Horror Club, and it's a really cool, like indie thing put together by these uh, guys that are huge horror fans. Yeah. Um, it was in a, it was in a uh, it was like a big hall. They had like a bar. They had loads of traders, and it went into the evening. They showed films. They had like. Uh, different like artists doing various different stage performances they did like a, a live oh, Q &A, a live q a with the soska sisters who did you know american mary and stuff like that okay um yeah. and i believe i probably met ryan there because i think he would have been living in liverpool he basically just sort of cropped up on my instagram and and he would just sort of show up in messages and um, drop me the odd message here and there uh and i and I was just sort of, I think he's probably following what I was doing and, and vice versa, you know, as you do, you just kind of on, on your thread. You, anyway, he just messaged me one day out of the blue. I had no idea he was making a movie and just said, would you want to be involved um, and do like a collaboration hot sauce? And I was kind of like, yeah, man, you know, I haven't really thought much about doing collaborations. I had one in the pipeline for that band, the Eagles of Death Metal. I don't know if you guys know. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. I'm trying to get a green light on that in a minute, but a friend of mine is their guitar tech, so it's we've had trouble sending the bottle back and forward to the states. So it was Brexit or that'd something. Be, like that'd or be or really cool if that if that falls through. 
That's yeah, awesome. def- definitely. Um, but anyway, so Ryan said about, you know, do you fancy doing a collaboration? And then he mentioned that the movie was going to be dropping on Shudder. And I was like, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm in. And, and it's been wicked, man. You know, the movie's really cool. It's really, really cool. Um, I, I can't wait to see what he does next after that because he, you can tell that he's got a real talent and an eye for something that's completely different. Um, uh, so yeah, I guess that's just how it come about. He just literally asked me, reached out, and then and then I've kind of he actually he messaged me today um, because he's putting together these um, little kind of spoof adverts for the <laughs> Blu-ray. And the character of Barry is is crazy. He's completely bonkers. When you when you see the movie, you'll see like he's a real character. This guy, he doesn't really say much. He actually barely says anything. But he doesn't need to. Like his face says everything. Anyway, so they're doing. He's done these like spoof trailers. He's actually done one for me for the hot sauce that's going to be coming out soon. Oh, I can't wait. Which will be yeah, it'll be great. He sent he sent he sent me the the pre edited stuff, and it's oh man. He's just like stuffing a hot dog and he's got this sauce all over his face. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it's crazy. Oh, um, but yeah, he basically said for these little spoof videos, they've done one for con. There's a condom one that they do. Like, <laughs> oh fried, yeah. Fried berry condoms. And he's, and the music in the background is like a copywritten piece. So he's, and he, he basically said, I have to get rid of this music. Like, do you want to record some music for me to go in the background for the oh, Blu-ray? Yes. Was, for the Blu-ray. I was like, yeah, man, of course. So it's it's like just from knowing him and getting involved in a collaboration, and it's just been that he's he, he's we're on the phone to each other all the time. He's a really nice guy, and and I can't actually recall if I've ever met him, but it it just it came around from out of nowhere, and I think he's just one of them guys who just kind of hit it off, and we get on really well, and I can see that he's on the up, and I think he's he loves what I do and wants to help out as well. So yeah, man, who knows where that relationship will end up? That's awesome. awesome. Things like that that just kind of just like fall in your lap, you're not really expecting it. Definitely. And then it just mm. takes off is probably one of the best feelings yeah. to have, you know. Success, isn't it, man? It must be nice to touch the, actually taste it rather than yeah. just skate around the void of it, you know. What's exactly. Mean? Like this situation right here, you know. It's <laughs> absolutely awesome. And um, <laughs> I I can't wait to to see that video and hear what you're going to be doing for music. It's It's going to be great. Yeah, it'll be fun if he if he agrees. I mean, I might send it over to him and he goes, "What's this crock of shit?" He's like, <laughs> "Okay, fine." <someone> else. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when he deletes my number and blocks me. I'm like, "Oh man, <laughs> oh, well, that was nice while it lasted." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun while it lasted exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what is the actual process of you doing these hot sauces? I know that we kind of asked about um, if you had recipes, but like. Do you do everything uh, at home to do it? Do you have uh, space that you go to to create uh, for the demand that you have over in the UK? So, so basically, the, I, I, the the idea originally came around in about 2017. So I've got a little tagline on the bottles that says terrorizing taste buds since 2017. Yeah, that's that. that's kind of when the idea came around. And then I think the, the website got launched, I think it was at the beginning of 2019. So that's when it kind of really was out there for the public to actually buy some stuff um i've lost track of the question what was the question again (laughs) just asking about your process and like where where you make it and um oh sure sorry yeah 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 yeah. um (laughs) so yes that's okay (laughs) this is why i have lists i have to write things down i should write the questions down as i go because like oh yeah the list um the process so basically yeah at the minute so basically the the idea was to kind of, um, you know, dip my toe into the events, uh, see where that took me. And then, you know, gradually down the line, get myself a premises um, as the kind of the sort of fan base for it grew. And as the yeah. events grew and the demand yeah. for it grew, then obviously it's going to outgrow the kitchen. And then my partner's going to be tripping over boxes left, right and center and, <laughs> and having a go at me. So I was kind of heading in that direction. So 2020, um i managed to get in two conventions we did like the liverpool convention and we did this weekend of the dead but i had a load of romero uh guests come over oh, and awesome. and then i just had a whole year ahead of me of, co- of conventions and events and, and then even actual chili events not just comic cons and horror cons so i thought right come around summertime i'm going to have saved enough from that to get myself premises that will be like a hq i can deck it out like a horror hq man and just oh. have that as the little factory where i make everything i would come visit <laughs> yeah dude well as soon as and it's still it's so hopefully if everything goes to plan 
with the events that I've got in now, hopefully by the end of the year, I should be making enough to to warrant getting that premises, basically. Pandemic, I know it did everybody, but yeah, it totally screwed me, man. It, it screwed yeah. my plans, basically. But I know, you know, we're all in the same boat, so yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. But I just, I just tried to kind of keep creating through it, throughout it. And I had, you know, I was doing podcasts and there's just some t-shirts come out and just trying to do as much as I could really. But events is really where it's at. That's where you can, I can get out there and I can even meet the guests who are involved in the films that the sources are about and mm -hmm. get them to hold the bottles and, yep. you know what I mean? And then actually just kind of chat to people, chat to just you know the horror community and and then and also the hot sauce community they're a, a great bunch as well yeah it's, it's just two, two communities of really cool people and it's just great to you know i, I, I want to be out there chatting to them and you know live and just yeah being face to face is always like the best thing being in person and you know we can pass yeah. business cards and all yeah, that good stuff you know definitely it's, definitely it's, definitely tough doing it like through this kind of format but at least it's in a way where it can reach a lot of people yeah you know, on like a bunch of other platforms it's kind of like a business card but just not yeah super it, personal like a verbal <laughs> verbal business card but yeah no at the minute it's, it's still very much just a, a home operation that would have outgrown the home if it weren't for the pandemic it was it was getting to, it started off small and it's just gone da, 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 da. and <laughs> my fan base uh, or i say fan base people that like the brand or people that are into the i the idea of it that follow me online kind of thing um it's sort of growing you know and it's just i think once i can like i say once i can get back out there with events then having a premises is really what i'm gonna need and there's a guy over here there's a guy called uh tubby tom his name is he's, he does a hot sauce mm -hmm. one of my favorite hot sauces tubby tom's and he's just killing it like he's but he started like a good few years before me but i kind of use him as i don't know him i've chatted to him every now and again but and he's just a young guy and he's absolutely killing it um nothing to do with horror or anything but in the hot, on the hot sauce scene you know very much the same kind of story just started from home and just kind of built 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 and now he's got like two premises he's got about 10 people working for him and I'm wow like, he must be doing all right man yeah he, so, he, he must be that's great i <laughs> uh, can't wait for you to get on that level that's the that's that's kind of where i'm aiming for that well i mean definitely i'd love to just be able to jack all the other jobs in and just do that yeah every day um well yeah, i really hope that like, it, it comes quicker like than later yeah. you know yeah uh do you have a favorite hot sauce or a rub or a jam i do, I do. i've got them right next to me here oh yeah Long show away is. one of them is actually this is this is actually tubby tom so this is his um this is his bottle uh That's a cool design i like that a lot pretty cool uh tubby toms and this one's called the scorpion slammer um and it has in it i'll give you a little little rundown red wine vinegar water sugar onion maruga scorpion chili and that comes through really strong and it's got like a liquid smoky flow oh, it's just oh, it's awesome. I, I like smoky things that's great it's really really good so i'd say at the minute it always changes it changes um uh because you try in different sources all the time so this one at the minute is my favorite tubby tom scorpion slammer or this one here which is uh carolina reaper ketchup Ooh. Uh, and they're by a company called the chili mash company i just found these online i just take a punt on different sources just surf through Amazon. Them. yeah and uh, honestly man this one is just in incredible i like ketchup so that sounds very interesting <laughs> yeah and it's and it's hot as well you sometimes you buy these things from supermarkets like they say they've got carolina reaper in it and they're just it's they're not lame. actually it yeah they're just it's really like extract or something yeah and it's like really watered down and it just tastes crap but they, but this one is honestly it's it's oh it's amazing it really it's awesome yeah so if you ever come across any tubby tom or any chili I forget the name. Chili Mash Company, Carolina Reaper Ketchup. You probably have to get it on Amazon, actually. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm probably going to look that stuff up after this and probably order yeah. myself some. Give it a go. Uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend them. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, how do you, um like, decide which flavors, like, for the sauces go with each, like, collaboration, like, with each movie? Oh, with the names and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think some, some of them just kind of were, just like, a, a, some of them were a bit, a bit of a no-brainer. For for example, um, Jeepers Reapers. That's I love that one. Yeah, I have the Carolina <laughs> Carolina Reaper in it. Um, a Naga Mare on Elm Street. That's got to have the Naga chili in it. <laughs> uh, Pariscoville Activity. 
um, has got to have the ghost chili in it because it's a mm -hmm. film about yeah. ghosts. Um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I that kind one's of thought my favorite. <laughs> yeah, cool. That's 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 probably one of that's probably one of my best selling sources. That one. Um, that's like a barbecue. So it's like a Texas. I, that's why I thought Texas barbecue, Texan barbecue. I thought that mm -hmm. kind it of works. It goes together. together yeah. So um, source and. Uh, the exorcist I was, I'm not quite sure I, I kind of feel like I should have swapped them around because source is actually the mildest of the sources but probably the the hardest of the films um mm. whereas that exorcist but anyway yeah uh so I don't they're they're I just kind of gave them their flavors do like a do like a part two make the uh make it even <laughs> spicier sequel <laughs> yes that's it yeah uh and then there was the then there's the american werewolf in london so that's got to have the cayenne pepper in it or cayenne yeah. american <laughs> that's right. one of my yeah. favorite names that one that the american yeah, that one was good they're all really good i think you do such a great job at coming <laughs> up with his names and they seem like they're very easy for you so that, uh, that's great it's good fun thinking of sometimes i literally that's all i do all day is just sit there and try and think of, i get drunk and try and think of names <laughs> <laughs> now i noticed one of them too had uh i think it was the uh, exorcist one as cbd in it um yeah it it's C cbd infused i kind of stopped doing that actually i'm is that still online i should probably take that off when i, I think it's on the the comic book strip that's with it i think it's like right. it has like one little thing on it i think right so yeah that. they're pretty old prints that i know the one you mean um, I started doing that. It was something I was trying out when I first bought the sauce out because CBD was a big thing at the time. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I mean, it is still is now, but everyone was raving about CBD and everything was CBD infused. So I was yep. just kind of jump. I was kind of really just jumping on that bandwagon and just seeing, you know, and if it had any yeah, effect, do I don't know. It. Yeah, it was a bit of a gimmicky thing, to be honest, but it was like, in the end, it was just kind of an extra expense yeah. for like buying CBD oil isn't cheap and I was just yeah. like oh, no it's not like it it's... really adds any flavor or anything yeah know? so I kind of just sort of forgot about that along the line I didn't realize it was still on the uh artwork <laughs> <laughs> well, we, now we just let you know so you can uh, go, cool. go ahead and yeah. change that That's, I'm going to add that to my notes list take off CBD <laughs> from there <laughs> But yeah. Another thing that's uh, really cool that I saw was the the new comic book strip that you have on your Instagram. How did that How did that come about? Oh yeah, man. I, is I, that going to be like a an actual full blown comic, or is it just that uh, that one page? Because I would love to get my hands on that. I've got some prints of that today, actually. Oh, got some got some prints printed out. I just got some for the um, just to put in a, a frame for the office and that. Frame. That is awesome. Um, but the i so the idea with those was um, as an artist. So basically, one of uh trade at the comic cons and horror cons one of the, the brilliant things other than meeting the guests and everyone is you kind of you get to meet all the other vendors all the other traders there and yes. and they're all just like really good artists and they've got great prints and great t-shirts and they're all just really creative people um and you all seem to kind of crop up at the same event so you always hang out and have a beer after and stuff and and then you just collaborate really so i think i wanted to keep my brand as creative as possible so you know i'll be roping in some of the artists or just or asking them if they'd be up for doing something doing a print or doing um for example the comic book strip was an idea that i had I, i'm trying to put together like a barbecue pack uh so like a you know so chuck in like a couple of rubs um seasoning rubs sauce and something. then a couple of sauces yeah and maybe like a mix and match thing and then i just thought you know things like some stickers and some mm -hmm. little thing you know little, little things freebies that, <laughs> freebies that us nerds love to get our hands on man yes when I get, we love when stickers I get, like a lanyard and a sticker and a you know i, I love stuff like that um you so i had the i had the idea to do um a pr like a print like a comic book strip uh print um with a uh, with um so it's based on the the dean and the dead character at a chili eating competition and he's got like the dracula on one side and the were werewolf guy on this side and I don't, I don't, have you actually read the strip have you seen i it? did it's it's mm. great yeah <laughs> i love it so it's just it was just a bit of fun man and i thought that i can print them off as like a4 prints and stick them in the barbecue packs as, as a bit of a freebie for people when they buy them. that that's a really good idea and then there'll be an incentive like people are going to love it and oh, then you yeah. can start a whole comic book line. Well, this is, this is, <laughs> well, this is it. So, so like, I'm thinking of doing vapes. So I've already got the comic strip the idea for the vape. Oh, um, nice. 
thinking of doing uh, down the line craft beer as well so man you could have some great fun with a comic strip with somebody getting oh, yeah. drunk and you know there's, there's just a bunch easy. of different uh versions of you that'd be absolutely <laughs> awesome I would, I would buy the hell out of that stuff oh man well the guy that the guy that did it jason miller he's a really really cool guy really nice guy again i can't recall if i ever actually met him when you're at conventions you meet so many it's people oh you meet so many people and you're just like two days of just meeting thousands of you know just the guests themselves and then just the people the punters the people that are coming around and the people that work there and the traders and the vendors so you kind of think oh Matt, you've you know you a lot of this is just kind of us chatting online and then you know I've, I'm, I'm pretty sure i've bumped into these guys somewhere along the line but we all kind of follow each other and we follow what you know each of us do and then every now and again i'll kind of for example i reached out to jason and said would you be up for doing this uh comic strip thing his name's jason miller check him out and he's oh he's actually well he's brilliant he's trying to put together a comic he's doing a kickstarter campaign he's putting together like a slasher comic book um Ooh. thing called death school and he's, he's doing a kickstarter for it at the minute so yeah check him out man he's i'll definitely awesome. support that i love comics yeah, he's a really cool guy as well and he had no problem doing it I, you know sometimes you think you ask these people to do something and they're just like nah sorry i'm too busy but everyone that i've met is just like yeah for sure like why yeah, not? like we're gonna Let's help each other out like get my yeah, name yeah. out get your name out definitely Let's man yeah the, the horror community is a really nice bunch of people i, I find they really are like even yeah. like online like i haven't really met any bad seeds yet yeah in the horror community i mean there's obviously going to be some but from the people you know, I chat with, they're they're all super supportive and they love everything. Yeah. You know, they don't really find flaws, and that's why I like in people. There's been a couple mm -hmm. over here, right? So, and they, for example, you get you do when you go to the conventions, you see a lot of the same people rocking up, which is great because you always say, "Hi, oh, how you doing?" You hang out and have a beer, and every now and again, you'll find someone that just takes it a little bit too far, and they go online and they start saying some crazy shit. But literally, they get out it just like that. They get yeah. all the all, all the organizers from the events. They're all part of their community, so they see like the, there's a lot. Sometimes you get a bit of bullying and stuff like that. They just go, "That's it. You're not coming to our event anymore. You're not coming to, you know, you're not you, you're not going to be allowed into the fucking for the love of horror or the horrorcon UK." So that you're kind of shut out from the whole community. Yeah, I hate, yeah, I'd hate to do that guy. Putting bad press out for something that everybody else really loves. So you know, oh man, yeah. I, or they get a bit pervy with some of the girls or you know like you get you got, can't do that man <laughs> you get the odd one man and it's just like what is your thing like i don't, I don't i'd hate to be that guy that gets shut out and everyone thinks he's a douche like that'd be horrible yeah because you know everybody's talking shit about you oh you yeah <laughs> definitely well, i've seen it happen a couple of times but thankfully only only with a few guys and, and everyone else is just really cool that's good um well dean this has yeah. been super duper fun um so where can everybody find you um so you can go over to my website which is www.deanofthedead.com pretty easy to remember um if you're over there in the states i'm really trying to work on the shipping aspects and i'm trying i get asked so many times so i'm trying to get that sorted out so if you're interested in ordering anything i'm, I'm trying but you can stay in touch and follow my progress on my Instagram account and my Facebook account, and they're both the same handle, which is at Dean of the Dead Hot Sauce. All right, that is awesome. And um, yeah. we'll be so glad to buy every single product that you have as soon as you are able to start shipping oh, it. Man. I, I can't wait to taste these and, and just <laughs> look at, have just reading the art. some of these recipes. <laughs> Just having the art in my hand, I think I'll probably rip off the labels, to be honest, and put them on my oh, because it's man, so good. Man. I, um, I, hope, I hope the weight is worth it. I hope that you guys are happy with it when you do eventually, which you will, man. We'll, I'll, I'll get them there somehow. I'll get them there you know, somehow. Take your time. I mean, you know, yeah. don't 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 rush the process. Just do what you got to do, and it will come naturally. Yeah, man. I've had I've had a couple of things, you know, a couple of offers of things, but, you know, you're just not too sure, and I think it's, it's early days yet, so like you yeah. said, you've got to take, take your time, and I don't want to you're still very new so gotta be gotta be careful who you let in sometimes you exactly know, just, exactly but, but we'll, i'll get there man i'll get there we'll get there yep and uh we will definitely be here and we'll be following your progress and mm -hmm. supporting you and talking about you even after this and uh maybe we can wow. get you on on again sometime down the road once you know more things start going a little bit crazy for you excellent man and then maybe i can tell my peer next to robert england story yes oh, i yes, would love to yes. hear we'll just That's have a right. 
a podcast that's a shooting the shit about stories that we we've heard about from uh conventions yeah. and, and other things yeah. like that yeah man awesome but uh dean thank you so much for for hanging out with us man thank you guys for having me on i really appreciate it thank yeah, you yeah it's it's our pleasure <laughs> so you. this was the baron's hideout podcast and i'm your host dustin and i'm aaron and we'll catch you guys next time <laughs>